Welcome back everyone. Today will be day two of Uranium Week. Well, on this channel at least, maybe not in the markets, but on here. And in an attempt to catch up with uh, the really extensive number of requests, I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on a few different companies today. Quick thoughts, because many of these companies, I don't really have much to say, so I didn't want to make a video on each one. Um, but here we are. I'm just going to give some quick thoughts on Forces, Mega Uranium, U308 Corp, and Toro Energy. So to start with Forces. Forces, based in Namibia, a location I like. I also like the size of the project, and I think that a $65 cost structure is very reasonable for uranium in general, um, whether that's final in that region, that's pretty fairly good for that region. And that being said, I don't really know what is going on with the management. They have changed uh, over the past few years, and I'm not sure how that'll turn out or what they're thinking at the moment. They do have a feasibility study. Um, they call it a definitive feasibility study. However, that is my only other point about Forces being if you read the footnote for the definitive feasibility study, it says that the feasibility study cannot be classified as a definitive feasibility study. Now, why they call it a definitive feasibility study if it's not technically a definitive feasibility study? Well, that's another thing you'd probably have to ask well, at this point, it would be the old management. But basically, I'm not convinced that the definitive feasibility study is as definitive as potentially some other definitive feasibility studies. And that is just a whole web of confusion that I don't really want to get into too deeply today. But basically, not definitive, definitive feasibility study for forces. Next, we have mega uranium. And this one was really interesting for me because I looked at the market cap and then I thought, okay, that's small. Let, let me go and see what's uh, going on with the company. So then I looked at their resources, at their projects, and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. This seems way overpriced. And yet I looked and it's like, not, it wasn't promoted. It wasn't, it doesn't have a flashy website. It's like, it seemed to me like the type of thing that would be undervalued. So I was confused. So I did some digging and then I saw it. And once I found this, I think I was right that it potentially could be underpriced and not overpriced. Now, what did I find? Well, well it turns out the investment case for mega uranium isn't actually their project, well, probably. I mean, maybe their project has something fantastic as well. But what I think the driving the value behind price of mega uranium is their equities. They have a number of shares in both Toro Energy and NextGen. And so in theory, were they to liquidate those shares, then they might have more assets than their market cap. So that is an interesting play on uranium in terms of a way to get some other assets that may be less than their market value. Next, we have U308 Corp. Now, they have three projects spread across Central and South America. They all seem to have higher capex and are still early stage and require some development. Now, they haven't really been advancing it, advancing any of their projects too much for the last four years. No technical reports or anything have been filed. Now, this is pretty much, doesn't sound too exciting. But once you get past this, you have to realize that they do have three 
well, at least PEA feasible projects. And right now their market cap is two and a half, two and a half million US dollars. So if, if anything good happens or the cycle becomes fun or they, I don't know, the project, any project goes forward or once someone wants to take it out or someone finds something next door or anything, two and a half million dollars is not a lot. So if anything exciting or fun or advancing happens, they are they trade at a massive discount to their potential net present value and could easily go up significantly. Now that being said, I just do want to remind slash point out that two and a half million dollars in terms of market cap isn't a lot in terms of if you need to raise money to advance projects. That is quite diluting. Finally, we have Toro Energy. So I just want to say that they're not my specialty. I have been asked about them a few times, mainly due to brokerages and logistics or whatever. I didn't spend too much time looking at them. I know what they can produce. I know approximately what their resource is. But looking at um, their price, I would say that if I were inclined to play it, to own some Toro, that is, it might be more advantageous to do it through Mega Uranium, as they do own a good stake in Toro and plus some other things at a discount. So that is my main thought on Toro. So the other thing about Toro that I want to point out is it seems to me that and I'm not saying this is right or wrong, um, but I, it seems to me they've kind of uh, gone into hibernation state where they conserve money and try and survive till uranium gets popular again, which they likely will, and it likely will. So they could do well. But again, I don't didn't focus too much of my time and effort on this one. It is a, a smaller project, so it's not doesn't have the uh, upside leverage that some others do, but it seems to be in a decent jurisdiction, so it could easily go into production. I'm not I'm not fighting that. So that's it for day two of Uranium Week. Um, I will likely be doing another video sort of like this where I cover quick thoughts on a few different names later in this week and hopefully one, maybe two other uranium videos um, this week. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm interested in knowing what you think about any of these stocks, if you own them, why you do or what I may have missed about any of the companies. So um, until next time, have a great day. Hey everyone, just quickly, you can read this here or in the description of any video. Just remember what I do and say here is meant to be a helpful supplement or thought filter for your research, not a replacement for it. I can be wrong and I'm often quite early, AKA wrong for a good while, which is why none of this is ever investment advice.